Okay, you know, one of the cool things about the ESP32, there's a little dev board with an ESP32 on it, is that, you know, besides the fact that it runs MicroPython and that it's powerful and it's got lots of pens and lots of options, is, is the Wi-Fi. So you can cheaply add Wi-Fi to all your projects, and you see that. So, like the, uh, the dulcimer or the, the zither that's with, that we're, you know, that project, um, that's that's Wi-Fi connected. Um, the weather station, that's Wi-Fi connected. So a lot of the stuff, it, it makes it great. Now, traditionally, how it works, though, is that you're using HTTP, right? So you, you go from your desktop, you set this thing up, maybe as a server, like in the other, in the Wi-Fi tutorial, I showed you about setting this thing up as a server. So here's a server. You connect to it with your desktop. You send up some HTTP some code up there whatever you're sending up there and then it does something and it responds and it comes back and tells you hey yeah I did it okay and then you close the socket down and the next time you want to send data you got to open up another socket you send up your data you get your response close the socket down that's the way the web works most of the time now that's not good for something so for something like the zither where you're just sending up a little song it doesn't take much space or if you are sending up a little weather data getting a little weather data not a problem but when you're doing something like this so I've got this um, little Scara robotic arm right here that I'm going to do some CNC stuff with pretty neat in it okay and then I've got an ESP32 sitting up there so this is running the H bridges that run this so I want to be able to send commands here, but I want to be able to send thousands of commands, if not tens of thousands. I mean, because you're sending, you know, if you're sending G-code or something like that, it can take a lot of commands to make this thing go through a routine that you want it to. That's a problem because it takes up too much space. So you're, if you try to load all that into your server, so let's say you've got a server running here and you send up 10,000 lines of data, you're probably going to have a crash. It's probably going to crash with a memory error, right? Because there's not enough memory to hold all of that. So what do you have to do? Well, you could put up a put an SD card in there and then just write it, you know, piece by piece, get it, write it to the SD card, and then run it off the SD card. Okay. Or you could send up little pieces at a time, but every time you've got to connect, send it, get back, disconnect, connect, send. It there's just not good options for that when you've got to send lots of data. So I realized with MQTT, if you know anything about that, they just open up a socket and leave it open, okay, and send data back and forth that way. So I thought, yeah, you could, should be able to do that. So what I did is I made a little server, just some changes to the server that you already have with the other, with the uh, Wi-Fi tutorial. I made some changes to that. And what happens is this will open a socket with the client. So this is the server. Socket is, or the client is going to be your desktop. So you can open a socket. It'll stay open. It'll get established. It'll stay open. And then you can just pass lines of data back and forth, back and forth, until you're done. I mean, there's no limit. I ran this last night and passed back and forth, you know, 100,000 lines of data. And then when I was done, close the socket down done okay so for me this changes everything because you can just send easily send unlimited amounts of data um, back and forth between your desktop and the ESP32 and it's just it's, it's fast okay so let me show you the little server uh, that I wrote and of course it's in the code so you, or you know you can download it just look in the comments or the description you can download that and give it a try yourself because it's pretty cool I think so all right let me show you what I let me show you what I'm doing all right uh, in the zip that you can download check the link in the descriptions uh, these are the things that are going to be in there. Okay, so boot and main, you know what those things do, right? And then here's uh, the net tools that I'm using in the example to connect to the uh, 
to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, so you can use whatever you want. And then of course uh, replace is, is what, uh, what I use to upload stuff. Okay, so on the ESP32 side, you're going to, you know, so you'll need boot and main and net tools. And then here is the OpenSocket server. And then here is an example that I um, did to run the server just for, for this demo. And then you can try that out too. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, the server right quick. I'm not going to go over everything, but okay, so there's just one class in there. And in that one class, there's really two parts. There's an application part, get to that in a minute, and then there's just the serve part. So all you've got to do is, um, let's see, right here, you got to set those variables, and then once those variables are set, then you just uh, call this serve function right here, and that goes into the infinite loop. It tries to keep itself going, right? So it's, it's fairly hardy in that respect that it will, or robust that it will try to restart itself. But all it's doing is, here's where it's opening up the client, or the uh, the server socket, okay, which is sort of the main socket. And once it gets that open, and then it uh, listens, this is where it's listening for clients. And then when the client connects, it, it connects, it opens that socket up, and, and then it sends, uh, sends to the application that there's a new client and what the IP of the client is and then it just goes into a loop and that loop it's just reading data it's taking all the data that the client has sent it uh, puts it in a buffer then it tries to parse out lines okay uh, there is a timeout deal in there and so if it if it's not getting new data in the timeout period it'll shut itself down but anyway it's just putting the stuff in the buffer remember it's all bytes it's all working on bytes not not text um, so it puts it in the buffer it tries to parse out lines and then if um, it has if it gets lines whatever lines that it gets it sends them right here so in this case it's a ping it's um, it sends that ping uh, line to the application. Then the application can do what it wants and it gives the response back and then the response is written back to the client. Okay, so so the client, your desktop application, sends some data up there and this processes it and just sends it back. You do it one line at a time. So small amounts of data, lots of exchanges. Okay, so that's that's essentially what's going on. So the uh, so this is just a loop that goes through and keeps trying to find lines of data, and and then eventually, if it gets an EOD, an end of data signal from the client, then it'll shut itself off. Or if it times out, then it'll shut itself off, and then the client would have to connect again. Okay. Um, now the second part of it is the application, and the application really, the the user you should change this application out right not use this but add add your own application okay and but so in this case it's just a demonstration application that the line comes in and it just prints the line if it's a uh, uh, no no data then it shouldn't be but if there is no data then it'll send uh, just sends back that there's an error there's no data if it's a ping then I've got it uh, sending back ping plus uh, what it is, uh, ID of some sort. If uh, if it's an uh, an EOD, then it just returns EOD and it'll it'll shut itself off. And then here's where the server is informing the application that there's a new client. This is where the server informs the application of the client's IP address. In case you want to do any uh, changes, validations, or uh, clear caches or something like that. And then anything else just get sent back with the word bounce in front of it okay and I, I didn't mention but this the way I've got this set up is that there's a counter and right um, let's see 
where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay, the line ID. So these line IDs are being added to the responses when they go back so that you can keep track of them with your client. So it'll just say L1, L2, L3, L4 every time a line gets sent back to the client. Okay? Anyway, so you should replace this application part of it. Alright, so that's pretty much the the uh, server right there. Now I did do um, an example, so uh, let's look at that. Here's the example of running the server. So uh, here's the import of the server, here's the import of the network stuff so that you can connect to the network. So here we go, we're connecting to the network. Here's the server setup. All we're doing is putting the host in there, putting the port in there, setting our client uh, timeout period. Um, so there's the server all set up and then we're just going to call serve forever. I put it in a try except because when you hit keyboard interrupt you know I don't want to throw an error I just want it to close down. Anything else will throw an error. And then uh, once something happens like oh, well there should there's really nothing that will happen except a keyboard interrupt that will stop this thing from running. Um, but it, when it does anyway, then we disconnect from the network and we're done. So that's the whole example right there. Okay. Now I have loaded it all up into my ESP32. So let's, I'm doing a soft reset and it'll get everything going. So we're connecting to Wi Fi right now. Okay. So there we pulled our IP address and we're all connecting up. Connected up and now it says that the OpenSocket server is listening on uh, port 888. Okay, so we're, we're ready to go. So let's go over to the client side. So for the client, I got the same thing. I got a, a fairly simple client um, application or manager, and then I've got a little demo script that runs it. Okay, so let's, let's look at the, um, the client. Okay, it's right here. Okay, so the client itself, I put a few functions in there. So you just do this, this is a class, and it's got a couple of functions. So you've got to set these variables right here. And then there's a connect function, disconnect, and it'll send DODs uh, like it should. And then there's a send line, so you can, you can put a string or a byte string or a text string, whichever you want and it'll send it there's a get line and when you do get line it it will send you if something's there but it goes through the whole process of doing reads and parsing and all that sort of stuff to to get new data if it needs to uh, but this doesn't wait uh, if there's nothing in, available in the in the IO buffer then it's going to return none so you can also use the wait for line and put a timeout in there and it'll it'll keep trying the IO buffer for up to whatever the timeout is you know so if you if you send a command maybe you know it's going to take you five or six seconds before the command is executed so you can just use the wait for line and put in 10 seconds and it'll keep trying and trying until the 10 seconds is up okay so that's that's pretty much all for that thing it, it's pretty simple uh, so let's look at the at the example right there. All right, here's the example. So what are we doing? Here's our uh, there's our server IP that we need to connect to. Remember we saw that when we looked at the ESP32. There it is right there. Okay. So there's our server IP. There's the port that we're using. We import the client, OpenSocket client. Uh, we set up our variables right well actually we instantiate the client right there we set up the variables and then we're just going to go into this loop and the loop is going to uh, make a make a line of data it just says data line with a number you know, keeping the count right there and it's going to send that to the client right there it's going to wait just a second no it's going to wait a tenth of a second and then it's going to try to get all the data lines from the client that are available so it'll just get lines and then when there's nothing available it'll go ahead and break um, if it's an EOD it'll keep track of that end of data and it'll shut down appropriately and then I've got a wait 
time down here just so we could look at it. I'm waiting four seconds between every time that it sends a line up there and tries to get data back just so we can look at it. That's all. Um, we'll take the weights off in a minute and try it out. Okay, so that's all the demo is right there. So uh, let's run the demo right here. So, all right, here goes the demo. So this is the ESP32, all right? And then we're going to run the demo. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll make these screens where you can see both of them. Okay, so this side's the ESP32. It is waiting. And then here is the demo. So we're opening the socket. The socket's connected, sending a line of data, and then it waits. Okay, so here's where it sends, and then here's where it's getting what's being returned from the ESP32. Okay, and remember we wrote bounce. So here's that command number or the line number, and then we put bounce in front of it and then we're getting the exact line back okay that's all the that's all the demo application is doing okay and then if we look over here at the sp32 we are printing line in and so this is what's coming in and then we're just telling you what we returned bounce 12 okay bounce data line 13 there's sent it, it bounced it and now we just picked it up and we got it back okay so that's all that's happening right there but this can go on indefinitely that the socket is open staying open we're just passing a line up there you know so it's data followed by um, uh, line return new line you know slash r slash backslash r backslash n and that signal that signifies the end of the line and uh, then it's processing it and sending it on back. Okay, so now let's uh, one last thing. Let's take the delays out. So we're just not going to wait any time after the send, and we're not going to wait this four seconds at the end. So we'll just let this thing run as fast as it can or as fast as it wants to. Okay. All right. So over here on the client side I'm going to do a control C kill that thing okay so when I did a control C the client knows to send an EOD so over here on the ESP side it got the EOD and it shut itself down so it's just waiting for another client to connect up okay so let's connect up let's run this thing again now this time we're running wide open okay so I don't know how fast this is. It, this would actually probably run a lot faster uh, it, than the uh, it, if it didn't have to print all this stuff. Printing is probably taking more time than it does to send these lines back and forth. But in this short amount of time, we're already at 800 lines that we pass back and forth. Okay, and this can just go on indefinitely. It's just passing data back and forth between the ESP32 and your desktop which is great little bits of data there's no memory requirements you know nothing so so there you go this thing is still running we're just trans we're going from here to the desktop back and forth back and forth sending lines of data back and forth so that's going to be perfect for for running this thing and you know it's fast too because like right now we are at 5,000 lines in just a few seconds since I uh, turned off the screen capture. So there you go. That to there, running this thing. It's going to be great.